today we're going to be taking a look at how to create and format our own Google Docs. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, uh, we'll have a look at how to do on a laptop or a PC first, is to log into Google Chrome and if you click on these nine dots you should see all your Google apps and we're going to just going to click on Google Docs. We can go through our drive as well, but here if we go through Google Docs we can see a range of templates, but today we're going to focus on a blank one. So really quickly then, if you just type in uh, the name of your book or the name of your story, let's say we're writing a piece on fictional story writing, uh, maybe on the adventures of Little Red Riding Hood. And now what I need to do, if I want to edit that text or format the text, I need to highlight it first. And I've got lots of options at the top to make the text bigger. I can change the font. And if I use the style, I can automatically make it a title or a subtitle. There you go, I can increase the text. Uh, I might want to change the font color. If I click on the A with the little line underneath it, um, I should get a range of colors. And you can choose, I choose a nice gray there. Um, also, as there's a title, it might want to make it in the center. So there's a, the center alignment and the right alignment and left alignment options. And I've got the U for underlining. So now it's looking a bit more of a document. Let's add some text. I'm just going to add some random text here. And from here then I can highlight that if I want to edit it. And I can change the font. So I can keep it all the same font if I want to or different fonts depending on what I'm writing. And again, I might just want to make a little bit more text here, so I'm just going to spread that out. And as you start to write your story, you'll get to know where you want things to be placed and positioned, and the size of things. So that's fine, you can edit all of that. But what happens if I want to add an image? So on the PC, I just need to go to Insert Image, and I can actually search directly from Google. I can upload it from my own camera roll, but I can also use this feature here. So if I just type in Red Riding Hood, I can insert a picture straight from Google and insert. Now when it comes to manipulating in images on Google Docs, it's much harder than on Google Slides just because it's a document editor, not really a pitch editor. At the bottom of your picture you'll see three little options and these are where your text is going to be. You can have it inline, you can have it uh, to be wrap text, uh, which is what we're going to use and that just means we can wrap it around our text so our text is going to wrap around our image which is going to be really really handy if we want to move it to the side inline doesn't look so neat it just pushes the text below and the third one is break text and that just splits your text up either top or bottom we want the middle one and we use this one all the time with docs because it makes it more easy to manipulate the image as you can see here, I can move it around and the text is wrapping around. There is a little gap there, and that's where this 1 8 margin comes in. I can make it 0 or 1 16th of an inch, and that's just how much white space I want the text to leave before my image. So usually I put this on a 0, because um, I want my text to get nice and snug next to my image. And then it will wrap around with the minimum gap, so it looks like it's meant to be there. There are some additional options, say like fixing it to the page or moving with the text. Um, really, it doesn't really matter. It depends on where you want the image. If you're adding text above and is accidentally pushing your image down and you don't want it to do that, then you can fix it to the image on the page. Or if you want it to move with the text as it sticks to that area, then you can have it that setting. Keeping it fixed is absolutely fine and you can move it manually yourself, no problem. And there you go, you have the basis of your story, you've got the text, you've got the chapters, you've got the formatting for the text and, um, and images. You can insert some more media, um, same again, drawings, charts, tables, um, whatever you need to do for your story. One extra bit I'll share with you is maybe footers and headers. You can go down to the insert option, you can insert them, and page numbers. And sometimes your teacher might want you to include a footer or a reference for if you're doing a research paper where you've got your information from. Maybe there's a link to a website or a title of a book that you need to add. Um, or maybe you're just giving a credit to uh, the author or maybe 
it's a place where you can keep your name. So I'll just write in here in the footer, maybe written by Mrs. Sydney, but you can use that footer space um, for lots of different information that is not part of your story but needs to be displayed. And you can also have on the top as well, and it can include in page numbers. All right, then let's have a look how it looks on an iPad. So on an iPad, you can do exactly the same thing. You can either go through Docs or you can go through your Drive. Uh, you will need to have the Google Docs app installed on your iPad, though, to do any document editing. Same with the Google Slides. So here I've just gone straight through Docs, and at the bottom here I've got the plus symbol, and I can choose a blank document or the templates that we looked at before. So first of all, it's going to ask you to give a title here. Um, so we're just going to choose fictional story writing. Uh, let's maybe say iPad. And then we can start typing our story. So same thing again. I am going to type in uh, maybe the fictional story writing or what type of writing it's going to be. And this might change depending on what you're using it for. And again, we are going to use oh, Smart Compose. Okay, that's cool. Um, so we're going to use the, the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Same again. Um, and that probably should be caps because it's a name. Uh, so what we can do here is we just tap on our text and we can use the blue uh, circly things um, to drag it to highlight the entire text that we need. At the top right corner you'll see an A with a couple of lines and here is where I'm going to be doing all my text editing. So if I want to highlight my text, tap on the A top right and here I've got all my text options. I've got my font, my size, text color and my style again. So I might want to make this one the title. Uh, there are a few options at the top if I want to underline it, make it bold. Um, and I can also, at the top, I have a quick access bar here if I want to center things or do some quick editing. Um, let's not call it the adventure story, let's call it the adventures of Little Red Riding Hood. Another cool tip here is that if you do need to change individual letters on an iPad, if you hold the space bar, you can drag your cursor around like a mouse, which is really handy if you need to edit individual letters within a word. Okay, so we'll add in some text, maybe just once upon a time. I think this smart composer already knows my story. Uh, there's a little girl named, and we'll just keep it dot, dot, dot. So you can see how we can add in text, how we can format that to be titles, how we can change the color, how we can change the style. There are some more options for text formatting. So if I just highlight the text, go to the A again, you've got these paragraph options, which just gives you some more in-depth details of how it's going to look as a paragraph. Uh, but we won't mess around with that today. Uh, apart from that, I'm pretty happy with what I've got so far, especially just for the story. But if you're doing a science report or a lab report or some a poster, for example, you might want to change the text and add some more uh, color to your document. Oh, that's fine for now. Um, let's have a look at adding an image. If we click on the plus, again, top right corner, we have similar options, tables, and things like that. If I add a camera, uh, so I add an image then, I can only do it from my camera or from my camera roll. Um, I don't have any pictures on my camera roll at the moment of Little Red Riding Hood. I might have to go to Google and download one. So I'll just pop in this cat for now. As you can see, this cat is immovable. So I need to click on the A again with those lines where we do our text editing. And I've got the text wrap options. Or the te yeah, text wrap options. And I'm going to wrap text. And you can see automatically it's changed. Much more manipulatable. I can drag in the corners to resize it and I can reposition where I need that to go. So yeah, that's the top right corner A with the three lines like we do for our text formatting, and we can format our image as well to be wrap text. If you're struggling with the view of your iPad uh, Google Docs, I'd recommend you have the print layout switched on, so then you can pinch out and it looks more like a piece of paper rather than just absorbing the entire screen. So yeah, a top tip there, have print layout switched on so it looks more like a piece of paper and you can pinch out and scroll up and you can see uh, the lines there. To add a header and footer again, um, you can press the plus button, but if you just double tap the bottom of your screen or the top of your screen, you should have this little box appear with a line uh, and then you know you've, got, you've added text to your header and footer. 
Final thing then is making sure you share this with your teacher. You can either copy a link for link sharing and copy that and send the teacher your link or you can share an export and you can click the share option and you can type your teacher's email address in here or teacher's name and it should pop up with their name and you can give access there. Or your teacher might ask you to create your document within a folder that they have shared with you. And it's exactly the same process. Just press that plus option and create a new document once you're in the folder you need to be in. That's it for now. Let us know if you have any questions or let your HRTs know and they can let us know. Thank you very much guys. Good luck with your documents and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.